You have an incredible amount of immigrants who've come into uh, Sweden, yeah. and you've had rising crime, and the vast majority of the crime is being committed by these immigrants. And if people say, hold on a second, maybe we have a problem with immigration, they're accused of what, what, what? Being racist. Just like here in the United States, the right-wing coalition in Sweden uh, is currently poised to win, uh, win big. It's a, very, it's, a, it's a very large shift. Now, of course, it's a parliamentary system. It's not a two-party system. So for Americans who don't fully understand, this is a problem I have with the parliamentary system. As you can, for example, in Canada, have Trudeau only elected with 30-something percent of the vote. He doesn't represent a, a, really a significant... I guess you would say a plurality, but not a significant plurality, certainly not a majority of Canadians. So this doesn't mean that this is you know, more than 50% of the country at all. But this right-wing coalition in Sweden is now, um, they're on track to win a majority in Parliament. Another global news, the far right appears close to causing an earthquake in Sweden. With 90% of the vote counted, Sweden's right wing is all set to oust Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson's left wing bloc in Sunday's <laughs> general election. Now, out of 349 parliamentary seats that are up for grabs, Sweden's right wing bloc, the moderates, have got a majority of 176 seats. While the centre-left bloc, the Social Democrats, have managed to garner 173 seats. I love that that accent uh, adds Vs where they aren't and they can't pronounce them where they are. The new vote, we roll the W. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go misunderstand the news at five. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't expect that. We just have to accept this. Yes. Just yeah. watch it and pretend you know. Um, and so here's a, just to kind of give you a briefer, the coalition's second biggest party, the Sweden Democrats, which by the way is, again, conservative right wing, just you have to understand that the political terms, spectrum or the yeah. terms exist differently. <laughs> <laughs> what, why is, is she? that really Swedish news? <laughs> yes. Well, that's news. I, I don't know if that's Swedish that news. Really it looks Sweden? like Sweden news. It was, really? Yeah, it wasn't India Just a woman Sweden's shouting elections. in an Indian accent. <laughs> that's not like, let the right one in at all. I just seems. I don't understand. It just seems like it would be a Swedish person. You would think so. They're known well, for other things than that, I thought. Well, here's what's interesting is uh, the, you know, the, uh, the Sweden Swedish. Democrats, the conservative right wing, very anti-immigrant. Mm -hmm. So she may not quite have the job stability <laughs> she was banking on. <laughs> She's going to be terrible. a senior fellow at Harvard. At mm. ha Harvard. Yes. <laughs> very soon. So the Sweden Democrats, the conservative right wing, uh, they're, uh, of course, being derided in the country as being right wing radical extremists. Here you go. Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven leads the centre-left coalition. He will struggle to retain power and urge Swedes to reject what he calls the extremism of the Sweden Democrats. We are not so going to retreat one millimetre in the face of hatred and extremism wherever it shows itself. So if you're saying, hey, this seems like the same old you know, mm -hmm. same old tired song and dance routine that you hear in the United States. It is, it's, it's the left's mode of attack. The right. platform of the party that you are seeing in Sweden is largely what they're tough on immigration policies. And we're seeing this as well, things that we would like to see in the United States. And when people don't feel like they're being heard by the government, uh, law and order, those positions, it's, it's immigration, law and order. That's why these Swedish conservatives are gaining ground. But for supporters of Jimmy Ockerson and the Sweden Democrats, the time for talking is over. The country has one of the worst gun violence records in Europe, with 335 shootings last year. According to a 2017 report, nine out of ten shootings in Sweden were committed by first or second generation immigrants. Today, no one can go out without fear. We know it's because other culture come into our country. We need a new um, government. It has uh, now I understand irresponsible the immigration policies. We have like whole cities that live in on welfare. That guy's from Jersey. He's it not Swedish. Like yeah. It's crazy. Who do you yeah. think they're tricking? They just needed to bring him in to be like, yeah, I don't like the brown ones. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like that news anchor bitch. Yeah. I'd like to give her a piece of my mind and a piece yeah. of my shut up. Hey, Aye. hey, Jersey, Sweden. Uh, Swedish Shore over here. Hey. <sighs> Swedish D. <laughs> I'm the Swedish Asian. Swedish. Now, I just came here to DJ. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Arsh, I f hey, who's got my mouse ears? So it's it's the law and order. It's their stance on immigration. Now, to give you, did you just hear that? Nine out of ten. 
Yeah, that's nine out of 10, the violent crimes. Yeah. Since 2015, Sweden has taken in about 163,000 refugees, primarily from, of course, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. And you have uh, these gangs, of course, that uh, are made up of immigrants from Somalia, from Morocco. They've been linked to rising homicides, drug trafficking, use of explosives. All of the references are available at lateralscredit.com. So you have an incredible amount of immigrants who've come into uh, Sweden. Yeah. And you've had rising crime. And the vast majority of the crime is being committed by these immigrants. And if people say, hold on a second, maybe we have a problem with immigration, they're accused of what, what, what? Being racist, just like here in the United States. And what they don't tell you is the majority of black Americans believe that we need some type of sensible immigration policy, that people yeah. need to come through here legally, that whether it's a, a border wall or a fence, you can mince words all you want, that Latino Americans believe that we need stronger immigration policies. They don't tell you that part. They want to, they want to label everybody who says, you know what, this is enough here. We just, need to, we just need to be keeping track of people who are coming into this country. You're seeing racist. And guess what? That's fake racism. There's nothing racism about, nothing racist, sorry, about believing in borders. There is no racism at right, play yeah. at all. But the fake racism will breed actual racism. You can only say for so long to people, what, 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 do you just, do you believe in borders because you're, you're racist? Until people go, you know what, sure. Let's go with that. Let's go with it. I guess I, I'm a racist. I'm an old fashioned Swedish racist. I believe that people should sign the guest book. Here's maybe another reason that people have a problem with immigration. Uh, references are available, lotofcrowd.com. Uh, most worldwide refugees, I don't have the Swedish numbers because they're a largely insignificant country, <laughs> but across the world, 24% uh, of them were 18 to 59 year old men. Hmm. Okay. Who committed the crimes? No, I'm saying, uh, I'm saying a vast majority of these refugees yeah. are military age or a significant portion, depending on the country, are a, they're, they're military aged men. You think refugees, you think the women and children to the lifeboats. Right. And you know what else would you think when you think refugees, particularly with Syria, you would think, well, hold on a second. They're burning Christians alive in, in, in cages. Right. So you would expect Christian women and children to come over first being the humanitarian that Barack Obama was. That's when we saw this huge surge in refugees. Oh Less than 1% mm. of the almost 13,000 refugees under Barack Obama were Christian. Less than 1%. 99% of them were Muslim. When people say, oh, hold on a second, we're a nation of immigrants. And you just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. They say, we're a nation of immigrants. Okay, that's true. What's the primary difference? What's the difference between immigrants back then? Give us your, you know, right, you're, you're tired, you're poor, you're hungry, all that. Okay, I, I get the line that they want to use Statue of Liberty. Good for you. They were white. Huh? <laughs> no, no, right. think about it. What's, no, seriously, what do you think the primary difference is? Yeah? Seriously. What do you think the question? Honestly, and it'll it'll hit you. I mean, this tin can's gonna hit you right the in the teeth. Main difference. Yeah, the Christians. main difference. Why we were able and why we were encouraging immigration back then, versus now, where there's a different dynamic. What do you think the primary difference is? We had we had the land. No, it was the American dream. Had, Come and be American. So yeah, well, but let about, me put a finer point on yeah. it. Well, it was about yeah becoming an exactly know, an actual U.S. Yeah. citizen and not trying to over. Well, the problem with a lot of look, I'm just gonna. Well, I don't want to say it. <laughs> No, I'll tell you exactly what it is. We're all, this is the problem. Everyone's <laughs> tripping around it. You don't need to. This is the easiest the answer was a joke, by that you laser in on it for people who bring that up. Well, okay. You just talked about how they didn't want to assimilate in Sweden. Yeah. Okay. Back then, there was no, are we, are we there yet? There was no there yet. The United States was nothing more than a promise of freedom. A promise of nothing else. And I don't mean that nothing else was promised. I mean, there was a promise that you would be given for free, nothing else. That was the word. <laughs> like, we give you our word. Yeah. Well, what are you going to offer me? Nothing. Are you sure about that? You have my word. Best we offer. will leave you alone and we will provide you with nothing. Go forth and do whatever you want. It's the Wild West. That is a very different environment than when people are incentivized through a welfare system. They come to this country, not all, just to be clear, but the people who Americans, Latin Americans, meaning Americans, not Latin American, but meaning Mexican Americans, Hispanic Americans, that's a more accurate description, African Americans or Barbados Americans, you know, let's just say black Americans, okay? Hispanic Americans, black Americans, the people they have a problem with are the people who are coming into this country and they don't want to take part in the American dream. Yeah. They want the free shit. When you have an entire social safety net of free crap that is paid for by people who have been here paying taxes for years, it is now a different rule book than when people got off a boat and do whatever you want. We're not going to give you a thing. Yeah. That's why you have people going to Sweden. Now, not because they want to be Swedish. No. They want free stuff. And Swedish people say, you know what? 
We want to maintain our hair. We want to maintain our history. We want to maintain our idea. What do you mean white? No, we mean Sweden. These people are not interesting in being are not interested in being a part of Sweden. It's that simple. The rule books change when you now have a welfare system that incentivizes people specifically to come here illegally at the cost of the American taxpayer. It's that easy. Watch Louder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.